In the last decade, the rapid development of technology means that it's more and more likely that an alternative digital world will be part of our future. Welcome to Art and Technology. Our guest today uses both the material world, what we have in the here and now, with the virtual, to explore post-human futures. Let's welcome Lawrence Leck. Hello. Hi, how's it going? I'm all good. Where are you? I'm standing inside the last architectural project which I actually made, which is this uh, kind of plywood pavilion, which I made for a, a residency at the Design Museum in London in 2012. And it was actually the last large scale physical artwork I made. And part of the reason was I just ran out of space, basically. I was in a tiny studio in East London Almost out of necessity, I started making a lot of these architectural spatial ideas more in the virtual world. So 99% of my work is built with, you know, CGI and video game landscapes. Discovering a place to exist. How would you say that that encapsulates the philosophy behind what you do? I'm always interested in the idea that where we are really defines our kind of outlook and the way that we engage with the world. So really in a lot of my work, it's about this idea of building a world, but also witnessing it and kind of inhabiting it as well. Sometimes that's more to do with science fiction. Sometimes in a way it's more to do with like a documentary style of working, but all of these new narratives really come for this yet search for like the question of where are we now? Which world do you live in? We all live in our own world. There's different cultural worlds that we choose to exist within out of choice. And then sometimes people are also excluded from certain worlds. And so part of this process of being included and excluded from certain worlds is something that I try and explore in my work as well. And do you find communities created in virtual spaces? There's no reason to think of uh, virtual communities as in any form lesser than a kind of physical community. They are open in a way that doesn't mean you need to travel somewhere. And I feel that that subjective experience is just as true as the reality of reading a book or the reality of watching a film. Which work would you say right now that you're particularly proud of? It's really hard to say. But if I were to pick a single one, I feel it would be Sinofuturism. With this video essay, I was exploring ideas of East Asian identity and technology. Um, and for that, I actually used like found footage basically downloaded online. Sinofuturism embraces seven key stereotypes associated with China. The video essay Sinofuturism looks at the way that Chinese culture and Chinese industrialization has its parallels with how technology is being presented in the media. And both are either seen in this really kind of polarized way, either as something that will, you know, save the earth, basically, um, like AI might, you know, lead to breakthroughs in cancer research, or AI might lead to, you know, a global catastrophe if you know, things go wrong. And at the same time, China might lead to, you know, a, a way out, out of you know, global pollution, and it might actually also lead to completely untethered environmental disaster. So what was interesting is these like really polarized points of views exist both for China, as I see it, and for technology. And how have people responded to that? What have they said when they've reached out? I think with Sinofuturism, the, maybe the reason it resonated with different people is it, I was kind of drawing from a very different cultural memory to do with, I guess, Chinese culture, as opposed to individual memory. I'm an artist using technology, my work and my livelihood depends on a you know, constellation of networks and people who support my work. And if in some small way my work shines a light on these networks or these other communities, then, then I'm happy, basically. It's been absolutely joyous chatting to you. I feel like I trust you with our future, Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know about that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Emma. It's been great chatting to you. 
Thank you so much for joining us for part one with Lawrence Leck. We're going to be joined by a long-term collaborator and someone he truly admires, Dr. Joni Zhu, very soon in part two for a three-way conversation. See you for more art and technology. Hyundai Motor, connecting art and technology.